Hey guys, Tom here from the Investing With Tom YouTube channel. Hope you're all having a great day today. Uh, today what I'm gonna talk about is something that um, doesn't come up in sort of the value investing community as often as I probably think it should, and that is actually investing in higher growth companies. And I wanna make the case today that investing in higher growth companies is actually the way to go, even for value investors. So value investors are often viewed as buying very cheap rundown companies and trying to squeeze the last little bit out of them, um, cigar butt style, like Warren Buffett was doing back in the um, 40s, 50s, 60s, that sort of time frame. Um, my personal view on value investing is basically just buying something for less than it's worth. So if you have two companies that currently earn the same amount of cash and one is growing a lot faster than the other, then the one that's growing faster is going to be worth more. It's gonna have a higher intrinsic value because it's growing over time, its earnings are gonna be greater over time and it's going to return more cash to the owners over time, which is essentially how we calculate the value of a business. So um, let's get into some more points around why I think growth is better, um, some situations where maybe growth is not better, and what I think is the best strategy for you guys overall. So let's dive into it. So I filmed a video a few weeks ago on how I actually go about valuing a company, and I used Apple stock as an example of how I would walk through a valuation and how I incorporate growth and that sort of thing into my valuation models. Um, turns out to be now sort of the most popular video on the channel, uh, not crazy amounts of views by any standards um, but uh, it looks like people really enjoyed that sort of style of video and one of the questions I got out of that is you know when I run this sort of valuation with a super high growth company like Amazon say uh, we actually get some really crazy valuation numbers coming out and we should be paying five thousand dollars a share and all sorts of stuff so um, there's some prerequisites to what I mean by always invest in growth and growth is better uh, so let's dive into that basically when I look at growth in a company there's really a couple of big benefits to that and a couple of things I watch out for. So I want the growth to be sustainable first off and I want it to be relatively easily predictable. So with something like let's say Apple stock which I used in that example, they've grown at about uh, 20 to 30 percent a year for a long time. Their growth has now slowed down to maybe the 10 to 15 percent range, possibly even a little bit lower. Uh, and we can be fairly confident that Apple is going to continue to perform that way over time. They've had steady earnings growth. It makes our valuation reasonably straightforward uh, because we can make a good kind of judgment call on what we expect Apple to do in the future. And we can be reasonably confident that, you know, within a few percentage points, we'll be in roughly the right uh, sort of area with our growth estimates. When it comes to something like Amazon or here in New Zealand, something like the A2 Milk Company, where earnings are growing like 50, 60, 70, 100 percent a year, crazy levels of growth. If you stick that into a discounted cash flow sort of similar to what I was working on in that valuation video, you're going to get some obscenely high <laughs> growth numbers, uh, value numbers that is. And if a company can genuinely sustain those growth rates over a long period of time, it does have an extremely high value. But if something goes wrong, if we plug in a 60% growth rate to that calculator, um, buy it at uh, what looks like a margin of safety price with that high growth rate, and then A2 Milk or Amazon only grows at 30 or 40% a year, only 30 or 40% a year, um, we're gonna get clobbered. Our intrinsic value is actually gonna turn out to be way off. And that's one of the reasons we buy with a margin of safety, but it's also one of the reasons I don't invest in super high growth companies, because unless we can pick it up at an extremely cheap price, a lot of things have to go right for that investment to go well. And even if the underlying business does phenomenally, if we pay too much up front, we can run into a lot of trouble. So that's a couple of things to watch out for. Let's get into some arguments around why growth is better and why I prefer growth over just buying something that's run down and really cheap. Recently, I've been watching a lot of videos from Monish Pabrai's YouTube channel. He's been doing a few different sort of lectures and presentations to um, various business schools. So I highly recommend checking those out. But one of the things he talks about is uh, investing pies. And there's sort of two pies of investments that you can you can uh, sink your teeth into, I suppose. Um, so you can invest in a heavily discounted pie, or you can invest in a growing pie. And he makes the argument that it's always better to invest in a growing pie if you can, 
even though you might not get that pie at as much of a discount as you might be able to pick up the smaller non-growing pie. So um, let's take a look at some examples uh, where you know both of those different cases have merits. So Monish has actually invested in a pie that uh, is growing and has grown substantially um, over the last few years. So he invested a lot of money into a company called Fiat Chrysler. Uh, they make Fiat and Chrysler vehicles and at the time they also uh, own Ferrari. And since that period of time, you know, when he first looked at that initial investment, he was looking at the current earnings of the business relative to the current price. And then he made a call on what he thought earnings would be in uh, the early sort of 2020s. And what he found was that the current market cap of Fiat Chrysler, i.e. the total value of all the shares um, currently being traded in the market, was pretty much the same as what he expected Fiat Chrysler to earn in the future. So if Fiat Chrysler could execute on their plans, essentially he was buying Fiat Chrysler at a PE ratio of one. And if you know anything about PE ratios, you know that that's ridiculously cheap. And if you include the spin-off of Ferrari that's happened over the last few years, uh, Monash has got about an eight times as money on that investment. So that's a situation where he took uh, a pie that still had a little bit of growth in it, but was also extremely cheap. Uh, and it's done phenomenally well. So he was able to combine these two sort of value investing ideas. He bought something that was extremely cheap and something that, that was growing, which um, gave him pretty extreme results in terms of the returns he gets. So outside of what Monish has been working on, I think one of the best examples of why it's best to invest in growing pies is actually what's happening with Warren Buffett at the moment. So if you're familiar with uh, Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway's current investment portfolio, you'll know that they have a huge amount of cash on their books. So they have over $150 billion, I think it is now in cash, an obscene amount of money, about a third of the market cap or so um, of Berkshire Hathaway is literally cash. So crazy, crazy cash position. And uh, that's because Warren Buffett is really just struggling to find investment ideas. And that's one of the downsides of buying a pie that does not grow. So Warren Buffett has been very open for many years in saying that he will buy a company with no growth as long as it throws off a lot of cash. And in the past, that's worked really well. So he buys these cheap businesses, they throw a lot of cash back to him as the owner, and he can then go and funnel that money into new investment ideas. And that's basically the model of Berkshire Hathaway and the way that it's compounded money over time. He gets cash from one business, puts it into a new business, he now has cash coming from two businesses, he puts that into a third one, he now has cash coming from three and he puts it into another one, etc, etc. And the thing just kind of snowballs over time. So that's something that's worked phenomenally well in the past. Now Warren Buffett is at the scale to where he's got so much money coming at him that he just can't find enough investments to put that money into. And that's one of the real downsides of investing in things that don't grow. So one of the recent changes, or actually not so recent now, so uh, one of the changes Warren Buffett has made over the last few decades is rather than investing in rundown companies, he buys great companies that will grow over time. And that was a massive strategy change for him, but it's something that's much more scalable. So what I mean by that is, let's take a look at Apple stock, for example. So Warren Buffett now owns roughly 5% of all the outstanding shares of Apple, um, and they currently pay just under a 2% dividend. So um, they're producing huge amount of cash, but there's not a huge amount of cash that actually comes back to shareholders. And that means Warren Buffett doesn't have as big a job with Apple. So he has a lot of cash coming back to him, but nowhere near as much cash as if Apple just paid everything back to shareholders. Instead, Apple can go ahead and reinvest that in the business. They can develop new iPhones, new MacBooks. They can spend it on marketing. They can do all this cool stuff, which will actually help the business grow over time. And it will earn Warren Buffett a return on those profits without him having to do anything. They can use it to buy back shares. They can do it to, to do all sorts of stuff. And that's fantastic as an investor. There's a massive advantage to being able to pick the winners and basically just sit on your ass, as I think Charlie Munger has said before. And that's really one of the main reasons why growth is fantastic. So that's reason number one. The other reason is actually to do with tax. And every time you hear tax in a video, I know it gets boring, so stick around for a couple of minutes here. Um, but basically every time you 
sell a company that you've made a substantial capital gain on. Um, in most countries, you're going to have to pay a capital gains tax. And it's going to be lower than your typical income tax rate. But regardless, you're going to have to pay a percentage of that total capital that you now have invested in company A that's gone up a lot. You're going to have to pay some of that out as tax to get out of the company and put it somewhere else. So when we invest in a non-growing pie, um, something that's staying the same size but is significantly overvalued, sorry, significantly undervalued, and it goes up to... Uh, its intrinsic value, it's probably not going to move up a again a huge amount. So since it's not a growing company and it's now in and around intrinsic value, typically as a value investor you'd sell and you'd put that money somewhere else. And since you have to pay capital gains tax, there's some frictional costs on that. So the total amount of money you have invested on paper in company A that's gone up is actually more than you're going to be able to invest in the new company. And that's again a downside of investing in uh, non-growing pies. If again, we're invested in Apple or Google or something that's gonna grow over time, we can simply leave that money there assuming that it's not stupidly overvalued and that we don't have a better opportunity elsewhere. We can just sit there, watch that money grow, have the business compound our wealth uh, internally, watch the stock price go up, eventually start receiving dividends as the company does have less opportunity to invest within itself. Um, but regardless, it's much better to, to invest in those growing pies. You don't have to be as active. You don't have to find as many great ideas. Um, and you actually don't have to buy the business at as big a discount as you might uh, if you're investing in those non-growing pies as a traditional value investor might do. So um, that's my two cents on growth investing and I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope you got a bit of a different perspective. Growth and value often seen as two different things. In my head, they're joined at the hip. If something has higher growth, it also has a higher value. So, um, you know, those things are joined together. They're not two separate, um, com completely separate styles or anything like that. You can definitely overpay for growth. You can definitely um, buy a very cheap company that may not even give you a big return if it goes bankrupt or anything. So um, there's lots of stuff that can go on. Growth and value joints at the hip. Um, so that's something that I hope I've got across in this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit subscribe. And I'm going to get this wrong again, but I'm pretty sure it's over there. I'm actually really sure it's over there this time. So hit subscribe on that side. Watch some old videos on that side. Uh, and have a great day and I'll see you next time. Cheers.